Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to the Environmental Quality Commission. Today is Thursday, November 10th, 2022. Uh, it is 6.36 in the evening, and we have quorum, so we are calling ourselves to order. Uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Hillman, would you call the roll call? Chairperson Foley. Out here. Commissioner Von Call. Here. Commissioner Serio. Here. Uh, Commissioner Trombetta. Joe, you got it. We got to hear you. Here. Sorry. That's okay. It's just that it, it's a recording, so we have to make sure people can hear us. Thank you. And now, if you'd be so kind, we could um, join together to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, especially the day before Veterans Day. Um, I hope you get a chance to stop out or whatever and, and, and thank our vets. Um, for doing all they do so that we can have what we have today. Um, okay, we have... Uh, do I have somebody with some noise in the background? Got to be careful. If you have noise in the background, you got to put yourself on mute. Okay. Um, the approval of the minutes from the meeting of October 13th, 2022. Does anybody... I'll take a motion to approve and then we'll discuss if there's anything in vote. Um, we have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. And then can I get a second so we can discuss? Second it. Okay. And second would be, that was Joe. Okay. And do we have any, um, uh, anybody have any corrections, comments? Um, et cetera, that we need to add or change to these minutes. They look pretty good. Anything from anyone? Raise your hand or speak up, either way. Yes, no? Okay, hearing none, can I have, um, can, we, can we vote to accept them as submitted? Got to got to say yay or nay. Yay. Karen. Aye. Yay. Joe. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Me. Yep. Joyce. I have to abstain. I don't have a copy. It came. In, it was sent an email. I'll have to look into it, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. Um. It was it was sent out not that long ago, but um. So you want to abstain from it since you haven't read it. Correct. Okay, we can do that, and we can still move ahead. Thank you, and Joyce. I will. I'm going to put this on my to do list. Joyce, send. Um. Patty, Joyce, send. Minute. OCP to her. Okay, I'll send it separately so maybe it didn't get jostled up. Thank you for letting us know. Okay. Um, do we have anybody who has any significant changes to the way the agenda is um, shown today? Now, remember, we'll, we'll add stuff when it gets to new business, but at that part of the meeting. But anything that's showing there, is there anything that we need? Apparently not. N nothing from nobody. We can go ahead. Can I get some feedback, please? No changes to the agenda. Thank you. Okay. And, okay, I know there's like 100,000 people out in our public participation room. Do we have anybody? Uh, no attendees at this point. 
No, at the, thank you at this point, not at this point. Thank you, Mr. Hillman. Just give me a moment. Um, and I apologize if I wince or I go off in, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, you know, I put myself in mute for a few moments because my back has been hurting quite a bit. And we'll try to just whiz through what we can. We got some important things to talk about. So let's first talk about old business. Um, let me see. I see. Oh, and I wanted to welcome uh, uh, Councillor Verdraco. Thank you for being here. Uh, before I go any farther, and did I see Mike? I wouldn't miss it if I if I'm available. I well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate that you when you aren't available, that you actually are very nice to let us know that you are or are, will not be attending, uh, because I know there's life and it sometimes gets in the way <laughs> or if they just keep changing the town council meeting <laughs> yep, exactly exactly <laughs> god that was like two months worth of moving things yeah. around we actually almost had one today but oh was that about the bad news that got reported i heard earlier today had to do with some asbestos stuff no, no. Good, good, thank God. Because <laughs> that was going to be a nasty one. All righty, so let's get into old business uh, for Sustainable Connecticut. Um, I have a couple of, wait a minute, I got the wrong page open. Okay. Um, I am still working on this. I just received Mike's list from Town Planning and Zoning. He made a great list. I haven't had a chance to finish ticking off all the items um, and making sure where they show up in our list of items that uh, action items that we need to do um, that they are planning on uh, accomplishing. Uh, I'm going to, um, and I don't see Karen G here. Right, I have to follow up on that, which is uh, Karen. Um, S, did you get any information on the recycle shred stuff from James so we can put that in our events? No, no. And did, did you contact him? Is he just not responded or? No, I have, I have not contacted him. I believe right. I, you might have sent an email to him, I believe. Well, okay, but we need to follow up on these because and I don't want to pick on you particularly, but I'm just I'm just saying for everybody, um, when we have events or somebody did an event and we're trying to put it into the town's event list, because that's a good thing. Because if we pick up 15 events, we get 15 points. And that's a good thing. Um, so we have... Um, the litter pickups that were in the park, there was one or two of them, and I still don't have any updates. So we want to, you know, oh, I, that's on this list. I'll come to that later. Um, uh, let me just see if there was something else. No, that was re really the recycle shred program so that we could get that in. And the recycle shred program, if it's if it was, and I believe it's in my email, and if not, I apologize. The one that was a year ago, we can put that in also. Because there is a small look back period, not just the physical 12 months. So we could start building up some stuff. Once we use it, that's it. So FYI, and um, also, because it's not here any longer, the Waterfall Festival, you're just that little short update. If you look at the the, the litter pickup that's being done by, um, and I forget her name right off the top of my head. Oh. And uh, sling English. English, right. Miss English. Um, I gave you a sample of what she had done. And that's what we have to put together so that we can put it in the place. And if a couple pictures, I know you have them. So 
send them along so that I can get them up and done. Because if we don't get up and done, we will um, not, we will nowhere near meet the July uh, deadline. So um, those would be really good. But other than that, um, Sustainable Connecticut, I think it's this week. They're handing out the awards for the period that ended in August. So uh, the towns, the new towns or towns that got um, from a silver, uh, excuse me, from a bronze and then got uh, upgraded to a silver for this time around. And people, towns who the first time are being recognized. I think that's this week. They were supposed to have an event at um, someplace in West Hartford. And I don't remember, but it was, um, that was that. So that's all I have on sustainable CT. Okay, so uh, that's good. Okay, Commissioner Sabrio, can you fill in the numbers for us for our Facebook page? Sure, I believe it's, I just had it here, it's 267. Wow. Um, okay. for, for the litter free. Uh, before you toss, I have not been updating or following. Um, that uh, the latest number I had. Um, now we just need to know what the latest number today because when somebody looks back, yeah, then they'll know and it will give us um, uh, something to make to make a decision that we talked about earlier of whether or not we can close part of that page. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can look that up um, and uh, I'll get an update. Thank um, you at the end of the meeting, um, but I can tell you for litter free page um, is the one that I've um, been um, contributing. Yeah, that's to. our group page. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's, it. That's, that's, the, that's the same as it was last month. It has not changed 267 um, and members. Do you know, or can you tell us going forward, how many between last meeting and this meeting, we'll make it that simple, or we'll just make it as of the end of the last month. So that yes, be there it. was there was no change. Last month was the same. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm asking because I didn't finish. Which was how many posts did we do? Oh, very few. Um, I believe you did two, three, and I did one, so four, I believe. All right. So if we could also put that in our report. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that, that does, the more we can do, and I have a bunch of them that will be good for the holidays mm, Yeah. about, you know, things of, you know, be smart about holiday stuff. So I'm, and actually I started an email. I didn't finish it to send it to you because it's one I used a couple of years ago. We can use it again mm. if you like it. I mean, if you don't like it, then we'll do something else, but no, it it's fine. Yeah, it's already done. I like already done. Yes. If we want to put a different color background, we could do that. And then it will look new. <laughs> or a new picture. <laughs> but th but thank you, Karen. I, uh, uh, Commissioner Theria, I really appreciate um, following up on that. But if we could do, um, we had four posts. And if you either do dates or do for the calendar month X. So when we have our meeting in December for the calendar month of November, and that makes it easy. We don't have to worry about dates and it's far enough along to, to report it. Sounds and, good. And it keeps it simple instead of having to keep all kinds of charts and notes and so forth. Calendar month. Uh, for number. And again, only the group page is what we're really concentrating on. Okay, that would be super if that, just as a little update, because I mean, they were lucky they had before us two posts a year. So we're working on it and I do wanna, um, cause I know you've been working with, um, Mr. Hillman and thank you for continuing to send information when it's available, please do anything. I mean, anything is more than nothing. So even though it might sound really boring, um, if you have some really cool notes or stats on the leaf pickup, that will help promote 
how wonderful we really it is a, a tremendously great program that would be a great thing to let people know how that because the more they understand maybe the be just one one person less will complain we could only hope well, if we don't do it, it can't happen so let's give it a whirl um because there's some really great stuff in understanding um how many miles of streets have to be blown with the yeah somebody was complaining about your not snow blowers your leaf blowers oh well, they should rake them to the thing oh yeah not gonna happen okay but anyway anything along that line would really be helpful and then we'll just post pictures and we'll just post something and and then we share it off and they're like wow i didn't know that and the more one less person that's not knowledgeable is wonderful so um but karen thank you for following me up i know um but i have a couple things for you and i told you i would be looking for pictures and so forth so i hopefully you will be able to use them or in some combination you let me know okay that sounds good i appreciate that um yeah well yeah it's, it's amazing the scary pictures i find okay um that's letter a we're going to go to letter c now in the list um and i have a motion um all right first i have a report as of the 20 um skip the page of uh, the october 25th um um Ms. Napes, who was a commissioner, uh, sent in her formal resignation, and it was accepted on that day at the town council meeting. So we're still back to just four people. Um, uh, when I had spoken to also this, um, what you call it, uh, a couple of days ago to the town clerk, uh, I did express the fact that we have been trying to get people to be on um, the commission and what could he do to help us. So he, he sent about some stuff to the town council about how um, uh, tough it is with only four people filling seats and sending out some information. So anybody who's doing that or if you know of somebody, and you don't want to approach them yourself, then call me, okay? Um, okay, but here is the big news, because this is was kind of done, but not done properly. So, Ms. Bunkle, uh, Commissioner Bunkle, would you accept to be the representative to the bulk committee? Yes. Okay, so now here's the motion. All of you are gonna have to vote and Joyce, you should be abstained from the vote since it's about you. But the motion is to, are we ready to write this down? Cause this is really careful. Cause this came from the town clerk's office to formally approve Commissioner Bonkel as EQC representative to the bulk committee. Aye. Okay. And do we have a second? I second. Thank you, Karen. Wait a minute. Karen second. And any discussion? Yay or nay? Yay. You want to discuss something, Joe? Go ahead. Oh no, no, no! I, I was, I was voting for, for, for Joyce to be approved. I thought you were saying she's gonna. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we're not voting yet. Okay. We're at the discussion stage. We do a motion, a second, then we have discussion, and then we arrange whatever we have, and then we, um, then we vote. Okay. So, um, okay. So, um, we have anything more that we want to say about? Well, I would like to say not to change the motion, but just to say, I want to thank Commissioner Bonkel for the work she has done on the BALT committee. That has never 
If you go back and look at old ball committee minutes, yes, we have to have a life. She has done tremendous information, and just bringing it to us is tremendous, and understanding um, the air quality and how it's dealt with, and um, a lot of the... Um, Sorry if my 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 brain gets a little little fuzzy right now, but the um the the information that you bring up when you have like charts and graphs that you get and bring up and we get to really get to see what is truly going on. So I want to thank her for um, making this uh, position really uh, so that we can understand and then we can make suggestions of what we want to do, of which we're going to talk about in a minute. But I do want to make that. Um, um, uh, she has done a, a tremendous job, more than I more than I could do. So um, Commissioner Bunkle, thank you. So can I now have a vote from me, Joe, and Karen? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And thank you, Joy. Congratulations. Yeah. And I'm sure you all have enjoyed her her stuff and learning about stuff that you never thought you were ever going to learn about when you lived in town. So this is important as as we could bring more information. So again, um, Ms. Bonkel, thank you. Um, what this will now happen is this goes, um, hold on. Oh, this will now, because it is a, representative to that committee, you're not a member, so it doesn't go through the town council and get approved and all that stuff. They just put it on and you go on. So the, the next town council meeting is next week. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Um, Councilman um, Bedraco, do you know when the next date of the next town council meeting is? Um, next week is a special meeting. I think it's the week after, the week before Thanksgiving. Week before Thanksgiving, okay. Thank you. Because it was supposed to be this week, but, but we didn't have one because of the election. Oh, okay. All right, that's right. The election was Tuesday. Okay, special meeting. That's in place of the one that would have been held. No, um, the special meeting is a one subject only. So oh, it is a um, one subject. Yeah, so um, the this would be on the one before the next, the following week, if you wanted to put anything on the agenda. Well, this will this is going to go on to the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope so. We'll find out if it makes the agenda because I will make sure that it's sent to James. Um, between Rob and I, we'll make sure it goes to James first thing tomorrow. Um, He's so probably not in. It's, it's, it, isn't the town hall closed? Say that again. Is the town hall closed for Veterans Day? No, it's open tomorrow. Oh, okay. Last I checked, email works 24 7. <laughs> so all we have to do is make sure that he's aware that we voted for this and everything is good. Because then it could go on to the, whenever he does the agenda for the um, appointments and the resignation part. That's where it's gonna show up, which is kind of towards the mid part of the meeting. All right, so thank you and congratulations and thank you, uh, Commissioner Bonko again. Okay. You're welcome. Um, a litter pickup of the citizen group, that was, we touched base on it really quickly. Um, at least get me the dates so I can put a space holder for these things if we don't have the final picture or something to put in it. Yeah, I can get I can get you an update right now. Um, there was no uh, pickup on September because there was a, uh, a date in a uh, location conflict. And then October uh, 23rd, there was 22. All right, but you need to send me the little slip that has I, all the I will. Okay. I will. I will. I'm just okay. updating, updating everybody. Um, Thank you. October 
23rd, there was 23rd. 22 pounds picked up. Perfect. That's super. I am so glad that there's these events, not that they have to be big or small, but they're events that we have to go and allow people to know about them and continue to send out information on them. So thank you very much. I appreciate it, Karen. Thank you. Uh, sure. A commissioner stereo. Oh. Okay, next letter. E, Balf Tilton, air quality. Commissioner Bunkle, you're on. Okay. Yay. <laughs> there was supposed to be a um, Balf Til Tilcon annual meeting in October. Right. Five people showed up for the meeting, including a Balf representative, since the date was shown on the town's website. But the meeting door at the town hall was locked. Apparently there was some sort of lack of communication and I have not received any notice about a meeting in November or December. Okay, so the meeting Our, couldn't exist because the town hall was locked? No, the meeting, <clears throat> apparently there was some sort of lack of communication and even though it was posted on the town's website i don't know Thank something you. about it wasn't there wasn't any official notice or i don't know i don't know exactly but the door was locked and you know the there were some people from i don't know what some, something else was going on that night and um Anyway, yeah, it seemed to be lack of communication in regard to that meeting, which was not held, even though like the ball quarry representative was there, a couple of citizens were there, I was there. Um, I don't know. Waiting, <clears throat> I don't know. Waiting was, for a reschedule? I received, and um, well, let me finish this, um, Barbara, from the health department and I continue to see high readings from the sensor. The readings seem to be when the wind is coming from the south, south, east. In other words, from the quarry. A high reading occasionally comes from the south, southwest. I drove down Hartford Road and noticed a new operation in full swing across from the quarry. It appears they do similar work as the ball tilcon operation minus the mining, but on a smaller scale. So it's possible a high reading when the wind is coming from the south southwest could be from that company and not ball which is why we need another sensor. I'm assuming this company has a permit to operate. I notified Barbara about this operation. I asked if perhaps the huge sand pile they have, which is approximately 30 feet high, could be covered with tarp or put under some sort of protective cover similar to what you see at town highway departments use, use to cover salt. I don't think the Environmental Quality Commission should take the position of, if the operation is causing a problem, they should be shut down, but rather what solutions can we offer to solve the problem? So these, things would have been discussed at the meeting that didn't take place. <laughs> and I received okay. an email from Barbara. Barbara asked me, she says she has no further updates to give to me to present at this meeting. And she asked me if I had heard anything more about a meeting to replace the meeting that was supposed to be held. And I told her, no, I said, I hadn't heard anything. 
right. To make matters worse, another sand soil operation seems to have started up by Weber's Nursery. Where? The operation abuts the Maple Glen condominiums. Apparently, the operation has been reported to the town, and the town is or is going to impose fines. There is also a noise problem there. Not the production is operating seven days a week. Last Sunday, I was at a friend's condo at Maple Glen, at the Maple Glen complex. The noise was so bad when my friend was just a few feet from me, I had to raise my voice to carry on a conversation with her. She also complained about dirt and dust covering her patio furniture. They have this Maple Glen complex actually hired an attorney that contacted planning and zoning and a cease and desist order was put out. But unfortunately, the town, when you violate a cease and desist order like this, the town only fines you $100 a day. And apparently this isn't enough for this nursery or this uh, paving company, whatever they are, isn't enough to stop off the operation. The fine of $100 per day isn't enough to stop the operation. So it goes on. Wow. I don't, I guess, I mean, I told, I told my friend I would bring it up to this meeting, but I said, if they, if a condo complex has an attorney and the attorney has gotten the town to um, put out a cease and desist order, I said, there's nothing more, nothing more we can do but obviously, um, I mean, we, so now we, there's, think about it, something's going, on, something's going on here. We've got Boff, we've got the company across from Boff, I don't know their name. And now, we, now we've got this nursery operation. This is not a good picture. We've got dust and we've got noise. Uh, one question. And we've got, one question. And we've got three, yeah. Um, Maple Glen is located where in town? It's to, to get to it, you actually have to go up Charles Street and then take a right into, I believe it's Sunrise Avenue. Okay. And what is odd is, for example, my friend's condo, her, her property ends and there's a um, row of arborvitae trees on the other side of those arborvitae trees is all this equipment, making the noise and throwing up dust. I mean, there's, I mean, there seems to be no buffer zone, or I don't, I don't know, I don't know how they're allowed to operate so close to a residential area. Well, that would have to be involved. Town planning and zoning could tell us that, because that's that's that would zoning. Patty, did you hear what I said? Zoni has already issued a cease and desist order, which they're ignoring. I mean, this but is the legal. You just asked how much buffer. That is a, that's in the town planning and zoning rules. That's Aside it. from that, I mean, that's that's irrelevant at this point because they've been already issued a cease and desist order, and they're ignoring it. Well, then I mean, they're the going to have to fight life. and not us. We, it, all there, we can do is encourage. There's, this is a, yeah, this is a quality of life issue. And with um, the other two operations, it's, it's mainly dust. Some complaints about noise from vault. But th with this operation, it's both dust and noise. And who was, it, who was issued the citation? Was it, was it? Uh, Boff Tilkin or the other company? Oh no, this is the one, um, the nursery. Not, it's not actually the nursery. I, I, don't, I don't know what they're called. Um, paving. I think it's called Weber's Paving. That's that that that's the other company. 
no, 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 no. There's another problem in town off of Charles Street. Maple Glen Condominiums is complaining about this Weber's paving okay. operating seven days a week. Weber Saturday, paving. Sunday. I mean, I was always at my friend's house on a Sunday and it was in full operation, noise, dust, everything. And they've been issued a cease and desist order, and they're ignoring it. Do we have now, now they're, they're paving. They're paving somewhere there. No, they're not paving. Apparently, they grind up material that is used in the paving operation. So they sell it. They're they're making the yeah. material, whatever the, is put yeah, into I the see. paving material. They make it and then sell it. And how long have they been ignoring the cease and desist order? Um, I don't know. I'm guessing three or four months, five months, maybe. That's a long time. Do we have a copy of it? No, I don't have a copy of it. I don't even, I'm not even sure the attorney or the condo association would, would release that. But I'm sure planning and record. zoning would. I'm sure planning and zoning has a copy. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, it's basically out of our hands. There's nothing we can do. If they're ignoring the cease and desist order. But we are looking we're gonna... to have a, 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 a good information that we're putting in our minutes. So that's all I just wanted to know. If we have an idea of when that happened. I mean, the fact that we just found out that's okay. But when did that, when did it happen? And you think it was, four or five months ago. Right, yeah. Thank you. And, okay. and TPZ issued the cease and desist order? I don't know if it's actually um, town planning and zoning or if it's the town attorney or if it's the town manager. I'm not sure who signs on the dotted line, but somebody from the town signs it and it's delivered I don't know who delivers it, if it's by mail or registered mail or, or sheriff delivers it, I don't know. But a cease and desist order has been issued to them. Well, that, that should be followed up if, if, if they're still operating seven days a week and-, and... Yeah, I yeah, but not, I mean, I believe, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I believe the condo association has already said to the town, they're ignoring your cease and desist yeah. order. I mean, I don't know legally, I don't know legally what the next step would be for the condo association. I don't know. I mean, could the, I mean, could the town possibly get sued because they're not doing anything? I mean, they issued a cease and desist order and it's being ignored. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, I don't want to see the condo association suing the town, but I mean, could I mean could that possibly yeah, happen? They brought the cease and desist order, so or they made the complaint. So um, obviously we have a lot of no information here to understand the whole, the, the, the rest of this. Well, 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 if they made a complaint and it's still going on, I mean they could make this an issue. Three or four months. It's that's up to the condo association. I mean they yeah. hired an attorney. Yeah. So. Well, I would think the attorney would know the next step. They might be planning the next step right now. Okay. Could be. Do, yep. we, have it, Could do be. we have anything else? I, I just have yep. one question. Thank you for that information and there's stuff going on that we're not aware of. I have, I have a couple more questions on that. Please, how high so are the okay. readings? How high are the readings and how often are these high readings? Joe, we don't have a sensor up there. The only place we have a sensor is near Golf Quarry on Hartford Road. Yeah, we don't have any sensor over by the um, Maple Glen condominiums. Okay. One question. The sensor that is near the Golf Quarry is new this year. Right. Thank you. So it, I believe, I believe it went online in July. Thank you. 
but I mean, it, it happened this calendar year right now. And yes. it was the first time that we've had a center. So that was a really big step. And the health department supplied the center. Yes. And thank I you. think. Okay. Thank I you. Mean, That's all I wanted. Okay. Only at fall. I didn't know. That, that, bring, that brings up the next issue. And that is um, we need to purchase a second sensor. It's very hard to pinpoint where pollution is coming from with only one sensor, especially because a sensor can, I mean, technically a, technically a sensor can pick up air pollution from 360 degrees. Now, Barbara and I have been working on how to correlate the wind direction with readings from the sensor. So it seems with pretty much accuracy, when we have a high reading and the wind is coming from the south, southeast, there's a very good chance it's coming from the Gulf quarry. What about if it's, we have a high reading from the, the south, south, west which we did have one time that's why i would like to get a second sensor is there another pollution problem in town that we don't okay, know so, about so this is how we go about it one we're going to write up the recommendation because we can recommend to the town council that this get done okay um so that's what that's that's where that's where we lie we can't go out and buy one and put it up anywhere because it's not, we don't have any right to do that. But if we put the whole thing down and it's not very long, you, you kind of told me about it a little bit, which was really good and explain that. And we could um, one, put it on town council agenda and make the recommendation to the town council. Um, and then they will take it from there because that they have to come up with all that, whatever's necessary. Um, because I, or the question is, Barbara knows how they got the one put up already that came out this year. Barbara That's, knows, right? Yeah, and that is, I'm surprised she got it put up where but she Bar did Barbara get it put up. That's that. private, Go ahead. Because that's private property, so I'm, really surprised that she got it put up on private property but kudos on to her private property okay is it on the, the car guys it's yeah it's at the it's on a, at a business i i know what is it the guys who have the car automobile shop there's two companies on that road that have automobile shops and it's yes it is on one of them okay but it's on private property Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So she got it put on private property um, and maybe understanding what she had done. Um, and then, okay, that's good. Um, do we have a private property person that's nearby where we would like to consider this? You mean, uh, I was looking at the school, but that's not private property, but I don't see what difference it makes. Why does it have to be private versus a public school? Because you're not allowed to touch public property unless it's through the town and or the Newington Public School District and the well and their their uh, their body, which is the Board of Education. And so you can't put if, I, if I were you, you can't put something on town property unless you go to the appropriate um, town council. Then they turn around and say, okay, so-and-so take care of this. And, and then they, they take care of it because we, we can't do it. We have no authority. Now, it's one thing to, to get something on. That's why if Barbara has some more information on that, that would be very useful. Because um, uh, this is big inroads that have been made. This is tremendous. 
I'm really amazed. Um, but we just can't decide to go put something on town property. Not not, not allowed. Because um, it's, whether it be the town or the school district, they're two separate bodies. They're so much fun to watch. But um, we, that, but that it brings up something. another issue. Huh? Bar Barbara, Barbara, to my knowledge, Barbara is going part time. She was a full time health specialist, but to my knowledge, she's going part time. And, and I guess she's looking at retirement <clears throat> or semi retirement. Right now, but she's she, out of the office until November she, 22nd. But she can tell you what their process was to go to private property <coughs> as opposed to town because that's another whole Megilla. But that will be part of our presentation to go for a second center, okay? Because that's the way, that's the way we do it. I mean, this is how the town works. It's, it's a bunch of extra steps. I know it might sound a little bit tough, but this is the way we get, how it gets done. So it goes to them and then they'll assign it to somebody that they said, oh yeah, let's do this. We'll assign it to somebody and we can go go, and go to town. So their next meeting, okay, we have a short memory span. There's a week, not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, um, which is, so we have time to get it on that agenda. But if you put together something short and sweet as a recommendation and what it needs to be done, I think that would work out really well. And then don't worry about if you don't have a tremendous amount of absolute uh, details, but you got the general gist of them understanding why it's really important. Because what we ha what was discovered this year was the high level, um, many times high level of the, and you have real numbers to support it. So thank you very much. Oops. Oh. Okay, do we, does that sound okay guys? I think Joe has a question. No, I, I just wanna say, you said it was okay. coming you said it was also coming from the opposite direction, the southwest. I was saying that area, like Harford Road, around the area, th there's a street with a lot of businesses. So, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, this is coming from more than one business. There's got, there's got my to be. Suspicion, my suspicion is that across the street from Golf Quarry, another mini golf quarry, I guess you can call it. another mini gravel and sand soil operation has started up. Now, Barbara did go there maybe, I think it was May or June, July, something like that. And she didn't see anything big, but I was there about two weeks ago and I did see a major operation going on there. There was a humongous, like 30, 40 foot pile of sand. And I mean, they were, this operation was going in full swing. So I emailed Barbara and I said, things have changed. And the reason I was curious is because we were getting a high reading from the South Southwest, which, which is not the quarry. So I said, well, what's going on over there? And I, I literally took a ride over there and I said, oh, this might be the culprit. So and I mean, oh, basically I the, the more culprit. the more sensors we have, the better, put it that way. Okay, this is good. So um, can we get, can we get a, a recommendation to give to the town and get, and know if we can get this thing moving forward? We do you want a motion, is that it? No, it's not a motion. It's I just need what what our recommendation is because none of us have read it. So we need to read what you're going to present to the town council. 
it sure it doesn't this is not a novel this is we have come across x explain a couple of the situation we have now come across y and we believe that we really in order to protect our citizens is having not only the please correct my directions if i'm wrong the south south east sensor but a sensor that would be in the south southwest pretty much yeah all pretty right much. keep it short and sweet short sentences and that will allow the town council to say if they have questions they'll ask which is good and I, I, excuse me i have questions now oh, who good. owns who owns that sensor the town doesn't own the sensor does it the I believe the health know. department owns it. Okay, so so the health, why should the town be buying a sensor if it's the, and who reads it? There's nobody in town trained to read it. it it's, a, it's a function of the Department of Health. And if they feel that there's an issue, then they should put a sensor there. And in terms of putting it on private property, of course the auto, um, it was no brain bender, the, the two, um, auto places are the ones that are complaining. So that's why the Department of Health put it on their property. It, well, it's a property. Well, let me give you a little bit of, let me give you a little bit of my background, Gail. I am a trained air pollution engineer. I work for the state of Connecticut doing exactly this type of work which is why Barbara and I talk the same language. Barbara and I understand what about wind direction and pollution levels and sensors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the health department bought the first one, but I think Barbara's looking to the town in other words, they don't, they don't have bottomless pockets. They don't have, they're just not going to keep, putting up centers and coming up with this money. But there, Barbara was actually very interested in the fact that we could possibly be putting up a second sensor in the town. Personally, I think it's it's premature to be running next week to the town council without saying if, if the proper channels are for something like this, which is why the sensor was put up because of issues through ball where the health department has been involved for a long, long, long time. They they determined it was an issue. Put up that was one of the resolutions is to to monitor it. And now we're starting as as you know running around putting up um, sensors at different places. We don't. I mean, I, I appreciate your experience, Joyce, but you're not employed by the town. Somebody who who's who's licensed and experienced and is part of their job to be reading this, to figure out where to put it and to read it. We can make recommendations. Why don't we make a recommendation? Um, you know, you can make a recommendation that we wanna pursue additional equipment through the Department of Health, whatever, but to be running through the town council and all of a sudden put this on the town, I don't think it's appropriate in my opinion. Maybe, but, you know, you Miguel, guys maybe you weren't, maybe you weren't at the meeting where um, I gave the, anybody, anybody could look at the data and maybe you weren't at the meeting no i was at the meeting i just think that we got to put we have to put these type of analysis and whatever in the proper departments right and whatever. this additional and an additional data sensor would be read by barbara in other words the more the more data we have the better and she's She's in agreement that it would be, I mean, there's some towns that have three, four, and five sensors up. We have- one. And how did they get it? And who pays for it? How did they get it? I didn't ask the other towns, See, Barbara, there's, Barbara there's, might know. There's too many unanswered questions. I'm sorry to bring it to the town council. At like what? Point. What are their answer? What are the questions you're asking? I could probably the answer them. questions are who's responsible for, in the first place, for monitoring these, who's responsible for maintaining Barbara. it? Where are the- Barbara, 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 the health department. It's their equipment. She monitors it. 
She monitors it. Right. She looks at the data. The she has already issued. She has already issued a formal complaint to Bob Corey. She has already issued a formal complaint because I know, of the I've, high reading. I've been involved in the ball commission for before you know for for a couple of years. But I understand this was and the health department put it there to monitor the the readings, but. What I'm saying is now all of a sudden we're going to say, oh, we think there's a problem here. We think there's a problem there. The town, these these are health department issues. I think we need to first formally go through Barbara. I mean, and say we would, you know, we feel that there's a problem here. You agree there's a problem here. We recommend the environmental quality with the blessing of the town council. Um, will you put up another sensor and monitor it? I mean. Or whatever I, you know I forget it I, I just I think I just, you have, I, think I think you have a point there Gail I think since the CCHD is the one who monitors these things and if they believe that there's a problem they should make the request to the town um, in conjunction with the EQC possibly well Barbara is out of the office until November 22nd because as I mentioned she's now semi-retired well but that's I'll, I will, okay. that's, I not will. That far, that's not that far away that's right around Thanksgiving this, this I thing. will Barbara and I are in um close contact through emails so I will relay her the message that the um, health department should make the request to the town if another sensor is to be placed in, in, in town someplace. Okay, and, and, and that we have been involved in whatever to, no, it's not just by her, it's, we're a concerned group of citizens. Um, on that way so that they can understand the bigger picture. Now let's remember, unless they're sitting in or watching our meeting, they don't have any, um, they only have a, a, a minimal amount of knowledge and uh, Commissioner Bacco, you're, you're a lot more knowledgeable than all of us. So uh, again, thank you very much. Um, I think there's a couple of good points. We really need to put this together and put it in the correct, um, um, what you call it? Somebody fill in the blank for me. The correct way of going about format. This, that mean? Say again. Format. Thank you. Um, so that we can just do this um, as effi efficiently as possible, because we can get it all written up the best way we can. Get everything down. Make sure that we someone reading it is going to understand it because they're not sitting in this meeting so they're going to be well then it. well then it maybe okay. we should hold off and we'll have have barbara put in the request to the town council and that would be a great question to talk to her about because she had to do something when they did the one that they did already which i mean which bringing us light amazing amounts of information that we never had before Okay. Do we have anything more? Okay. Let's go to um, letter F. I'm trying to keep us on, on track here. Uh, which is special parking for recognition of use of hybrid cars. Um, there's a lot of things here. Um, again, it's a presentation um, to take away a, a public parking space, possibly. Um, there's X amount of parking spaces that have to be uh, kept depending on where this is gonna be. Um, I'm just giving you, and not to be the negative nilly here, but um, there are um, requirements under zoning and planning that um, X amount of spaces have to be for this, that, and the other thing. So designating a space could not necessarily be that good. Where do we want to put it? All of that, we should have that all presented here at a meeting so that we can make sure that we- I have thoughts. Yeah, I have facts on that. Okay, good. So would you write them up so that we can all read them together? Everybody can send in- I did. 
And I did. I presented it in an email. I did that. You presented it in an email. Okay. I'll well, let me read the paragraph I have. This is how you would present it to somebody other than us. I did that. Patty, at the last meeting, you said write up a paragraph so we can discuss this at the next meeting. And I wrote up the paragraph I and I sent out the okay, email. Okay, okay. Uh, don't beat me up, but you know, there's only so much I can remember and I appreciate and I believe that that's what I said. So, or and you sent it, but somehow I'm missing it. So I will have to go back and find that. And if that's sufficient, then we could go forward. Um, and we should- Well, my, my suggestion is that we have, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, 25 parking spaces all around Market Square. I'm talking to start by having a um, reserved parking, maybe at the town hall, and then maybe we can have one or two in Market Square. And if this method to reward people- It needs people, to be written out and tell them exactly what you want to see happen. And then they can go from that point. All right. And that's in that this email you sent me. Okay. This is what I'm thinking. Uh, uh, okay, go ahead. A sign like that. I mean, we're all about being more sustainable. So why not reward the people who are driving electric or car hybrid cars? They're they're the well, they're our shining shining star. Why not reward these people for being sustainable? And maybe the snowball will start rolling and okay. restaurants will start putting up a sign and other places will put up a sign and reward these be people for being sustainable. Just like a re employee of the month reward sign. All right. Or veteran park veterans park here sign. That's a reward. So I why think don't one, I think one or two spots is reasonable. And whether or not there like are said, spaces asking, that, and that, and whether or not you could actually the town would have to designate the space because it would take away from public parking. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> No, one, one or two spots is reasonable. That's not unreasonable. One or two spots. Well, there, as Patty said, there is a requirement by zoning for for parking spaces, and if we designated for only one user, I don't know if that would still be considered towards these, the these quota. Are questions that are not answered because I don't know. But I was thinking about that in general because you just can't. We don't. We can make the recommendation, but you got to spell it all out and hand it to them. So um, I, I'm i not arguing the point. I'm arguing the how to get it so that we can put it up, have it looked at, and have it either approved or not approved. Just make a just just make like a recommendation from our from our uh, from our committee. That is correct. Patty, I'll send know. over that. I'll send over that email again. I appreciate it because I, I, I will. When I hang up, I wrote down that you sent me an email, and I apologize. Okay. Joyce, I, I wanted to ask as well if I, I may add. Um, I, I would recommend just starting with one spot at the town, um, hall area. Um, there are already two parking spots in Market Square for EV vehicles. Right. Um, so I don't think there needs to be more in Market Square. It's pretty clear that those are for uh, uh, hybrid or EV vehicles. So at least for now, um, I would start um, with just one at Town Hall. That's just my recommendation. I, I, I That'd be fine with me. Okay, so we need it, we need it written up pretty so that we can read it into the minutes or submit it in the minutes so they can read it. And then they can go forward and determine if they, um, that, because it's a recommendation, which is duly in our task of a, of our commission to make these types of recommendations to um, the town council. Can I ask commissioner uh, Bedreco and, and uh... Mr. Hellman, if you have any other feedback for us now, 
or Thank for Joyce um, that we should prepare ahead of time or details we should gather in our proposal or Joyce's proposal? The only, the only thing that I might recommend is, is reaching out to uh, the town planner and letting them know what you are going to recommend and see if it's a viable option to use one of those spaces for for what you're requesting. That would be great. We would send out your um, a simple email to um, Renata um, in order to find out if that's a doable situation. If it's doable, we go forward. If it's not doable, we'll find out whatever it is. I have a question for Rob. Who makes the signs? That sign we would actually have to order from our vendor. Right. All right. Anything more on that? I'll leave this here because if 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 it's a doable thing and uh, uh, planning and zoning says, yeah, it's a doable, then we'll go over there. Might not be the, per we'll find out whatever that perfect spot is and we'll go from there. Uh, but uh, yeah, Renata would be um, the town planner and the person who would be able to say yay or nay. Um, and she's probably a lot quicker at looking up something like that than you or I or anybody here. Yes, no? Cool. All right. But I, I really, I really like the the idea. And I think it's a great recommendation. Um, and I want to say thank you very much. And we'll, we'll work to making it happen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm looking at something else here on my chat. Um, Mr. Hillman, what's going on besides a lot of leaves? <laughs> Sorry, the leaf business is picking up, as they say. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of our uh, of the leaf program. Um, it's uh, it's us usually a uh, ends up being a six week program. We uh, we advertise, you know, we will uh, guarantee two pickups pending, you know, uh, any um, unforeseen circumstances such as weather or like we had uh, years ago, the October snowstorm. Um, so it usually takes us from the beginning of November till about mid-December. Um, and we have four crews that are out. We start on the east side and uh, then we go to the west side, as I said earlier in our conversations. It takes us about a week to get through each side. Um, and when all is said and done, we end up picking up anywhere between 12,500 and 14,000 cubic yards of, of leaves. Um, to put that in perspective, um, a tractor trailer basically holds anywhere between uh, 90 to 100 cubic yards if you were to fill that with leaves. So it's, it's about 125 to uh, 140 truckloads of leaves that actually get uh, taken out of the facility. The leaves are brought um, to. Can you repeat that again? I was writing this down so we have oh. some info we could put together. You said 12,000? Yep, anywhere between 12,000 and 14,000 cubic yards are collected. Oh my in God. And that is a, approximately how many tractor trailers? Uh, you consider a tractor, tractor trailer holds about 100 cubic yards, so it's anywhere between 120 to 140. Wow. Just the, the uh, just a normal tractor trailer, right? Not not one of those fancy big ones. No, just your typical tractor trailer is about 100 cubic yards. Yeah, anywhere between okay. 80 and 100. Yeah. Okay, super. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. That yep. many leaves. Yeah. Yep. And they are uh, they're brought to the Scotts facility in Ellington, and there they are turned into various other products. Where is that located? Ellington. Thank you. And how do they get there? By the tractor trailers. So we we bring them in with our six wheelers, 
uh, offload them, and then the tractor trailers come in there anywhere between five and ten a, a day. We load them up, and and the contractor hauls them down. Okay, so they go into the transfer station or over at where you are. Correct. Which one? No, I'm sorry, the transfer station. I'm sorry, I was reading my notes. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I was giving you a choice, and you said, "Yeah." Okay. Yeah, I was reading. In... <laughs> so yes. <laughs> Yep. So that yes, not the highway facility. They go to the transfer station. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we bring them to the transfer station, and then the vendors, tractor trailers come in. Correct. Okay. Okay. So we bring them to trans. Okay. Wait a minute. She says trans. I never heard this whole story, so this is good. Transfer, and then vendor picks up. Yep. Just to keep it real short and sweet. Okay. And they make that many trips then? Yes, they do. Yep. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of leaves. It is. You know, and the majority of them are brought in by us. There are some residents who choose to bring in their own, um, but it's it's definitely a small uh, percentage of what um, what is picked up. Okay. So maybe... Less than five percent. Oh, I would say less than five percent. Yes. Okay, just just to give it some yep. realization that the majority yeah. of people enjoy the leaf pickup if they're living in a single family home. Yeah, all you have to do is drive through town and see all the piles out on the road. Yeah, the piles are on the road instead of their. Yeah. Okay, piles. Hmm. And it should be, they should not be in the road, right? That is correct. Bob, can I ask, are, uh, you said that Go ahead, Karen. the facility is able to um, make them into another product, um, and I'm assuming that they, um, they pay for the cost to have the tractor trailers come, come, and then they have the product that they can use. Is that right? Um, no, we do not sell the product. We we pay to have it hauled out of our facility, and then it's owned by the contractor to do what they choose with it. Okay. And do you know what it is they they make it into? Or uh, you... it's generally uh, bagged uh, compost. It's compost. it's a actually it's a Scotts facility. So just think of the products that Scotts makes and puts in bags. Okay. Um, they do that, and then you know peat moss, and and I, well, I actually I don't know if they do peat moss out of it, but mostly it's topsoil compost type material. Okay. We used to, I used to get it delivered that stuff when you guys used to keep it. I know back in the dark ages, and we had it delivered at Woods Edge, and I would get 10, 12 truckloads, you know, dump trucks like the dump trucks we have. They would fill it up with the mulch kind of thing. And they would, I mean, back in the day. And then we stopped doing that for whatever reason. So, but yeah, it, was, the, it, it was it was great because it put it put stuff right back into the um, into Newington from Newington. Right, that is true. So it was like, why I, did we stop that, Rob? Why did we stop doing that? Stopped well before my time, Joyce. I'm not 100% sure why. I think it stopped partially because um, at that time, the Apple Hill condominiums were going up. And um, this process is not the um, uh, the best type of thing to be doing near residential homes. It does have an odor to it. Um, even if if it's tended to properly, it does have an odor and there's constantly leaves there. So when you get the heavy winds, um, they do have a tendency to blow around, although there's a buffer between us and Apple Hill. So I just think the location of our transfer station in relation to Apple Hill and the park um, just wasn't very conducive to doing it any longer. Thank you. Apple Hills across the street, isn't it? No, the it's to the rear of the because uh, it's on um, it's on Lewis Street. Well, 
Hill. I'm sorry, not Apple Hill. Oh my gosh, not Apple Hill. I was going to say, wait a minute, that's not Apple Hill. I apologize. Churchill. Churchill. What was the name? Churchill is across the street, and then uh, well, Hunter's Green, and then um, what is next? Hunter's Green. Karen, help me out. Foxborough. Foxborough. That's it. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's okay. And Chase at Foxborough. And Chase yes, at that, Foxborough. Yeah. The, the, well, those are the two. Kind of on the same land. Okay. That makes more sense because I'm going Apple Hill. No. Okay. Yeah. But, I apologize for that one. No, that's fine because Foxborough and Chase at Foxborough were there for a lot longer time than Hunter's Green. And well, Churchill's been there for a very long time. Probably the same amount of time I, we've been here. Um, okay, so you thought it was not good because of possible odor in the building of these. And what was the other reason? Um, the, the the cells are large, and and the wind does blow significantly through the transfer station. I do not know why. Sometimes it's like a wind tunnel, and the debris just happens to go everywhere. It gets into the park. And although oh, there's a park. buffer of trees. That was the key. Yeah. Okay, the park. Sorry. It's like literally right there. Thank you. I just want to have some my semblance of if I could read my notes later. But thank you. Um, how are we doing? How many mattresses? Do we have that number? This is really frightening. How many mattresses we could throw away in a month? Um, I don't have the the total for the year so far, but I know we did I uh, just um Got a note from our uh, vendor. We did a hundred mattresses in um, in October at a weight of three and a half tons. Wow! And they're all being recycled now. Yes, any of the mattresses that go in the mattress container that gets sent to the to the vendor. Yes. And you said it was how many tons? Uh, three and a half. Wow. That's a lot of pounds, but they're all being recycled now, which is we're doing our part and there's no additional cost for them to come and pick these up, correct? That is correct. It's funded by the, uh, what it's called EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility. So the vet, all the Sealy and all those types of uh, manufacturers are responsible to uh, pay for it. Okay, so our tax dollars are working someplace else, but funneling back in to do this, but which is not in our town budget. Okay, so somebody's got to pay for it. And when it comes down to it, it's okay. That's really exciting. I just can't believe that we can sleep through that many mattresses and throw them away in a month. That's a lot. Think about it. Look around your neighborhood. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's astonishing the the number when you consider there's, you know, 11,000 or so dwelling units in town and we can dispose of close to 2,000, 2,500 mattresses annually. Yeah, it's, it's like really a lot. All right. Uh -huh. What's the average number of people who's living who are living per household? Do you know that, Rob? Is it two? Who is it three or four? Well, we have thirteen thousand households and thirty thousand people living in town. So you could do that average pretty quickly. Um, I mean, those are rounded. It's not exact. There's 30,000 people living in Newington, or 31,000, if you want to round that up for the new number, um, citizens that live in, in residential and, or that's in total. So that does include some condos, but that's a really small number in comparison, and uh, the 13,000 households. So that will give you approximate average. Um, I can't do the math in my head right now, but that's what we have. That's a really good question. Thank you. Uh, keeps it in perspective. Um, anything more on that? Anything more? Any new exciting stuff that I don't want to hear at a town council meeting, Rob? <laughs> no, I don't have anything at this point, Kat, uh, Patty. 
anything new that's kind of like in the boiler kind of spinning around thinking about things that we could do uh not at this point um i really don't have anything uh in the works right now okay just nothing in works thank you Rob, mr hillman i really appreciate it and and good luck oh good luck on the uh leaf pickup thank you hopefully the weather holds out for us yeah no snow would be nice yeah, and tomorrow we're supposed to get rain, which is not going to help leaf pick up. Um, all righty. So, um, all right, we'll go on. Thank you. Thank you. Is Jose, right? Yes, Jose is with us tonight. Thank you, Jose, for really changing up the um, slides. Um, I don't have anything more in this area. Um, does anybody have anything else? And this would be a new business item. I think we were talking about everything that we're currently doing. Is there anything new at this moment? If not, we'll bring it up next month. I um, wanted to ask if I may. Um, yes, go ahead. Um, Mr. Hillman or Rob, um, is there any communication that you were getting from the recyclers, uh, haulers for the town on educating what recycling needs to happen or um, any additional? No, we really haven't opened up that communication with Murphy Road yet. Uh, we're still just trying to get the kinks out of it as the new facility with all of our haulers and things like that and pretty much have all the kinks worked out. So hopefully, a good point, hopefully in the near future, we can reach out to them and they can assist us in communication to our residents. Right. Okay, well, they should be able to speak, sneak us in real quickly. That would be right. helpful. Thank you. Thank you. That, that was a great question, Karen. Thank you. Um, I, no, trying to do this right, Commissioner Banco. Okay, um, number 10. Do we have anybody in the public participation room? Nobody in the waiting room. Okay, well, we're trying it. Okay, and then, um, okay, so uh, Mr. Hillman. And uh, Ms. Uh, Councilor Bedraco, uh, I would love to hear any other comments from you for tonight, things that we can look forward to. Um, from a town council perspective, I, I know you were talking about Renata. I'm not sure whether you're aware that she'll be leaving us um, the beginning of yeah, December. I, I knew that she two has months a, ago. Fantastic. So where yeah, she, she has a fantastic job with um, University of Connecticut teaching planning and zoning courses. So um, wow. it's, it's a great opportunity for her and she'll be great at it. Um, and we're also um, going to be doing a uh, search for a new town manager where we've solicited uh, proposals from four um, companies that do um, searches, um, whether it would be re regional or national or not. Um, the decision hasn't been made, but it certainly will, you know, there will be a search done uh, that will bring in, you know, it'll either regional wide or national. Um, we should be making a decision on which firm to go with um, within the next week or two. Oh, good. Um, and, uh, just from planning and zoning, um, I'm not sure whether you're aware of what's going on. They got approval for every, you know, if you wait long enough, things come back in style for the top of Cedar Mountain, which originally started out as a car, as a gas station and convenience store. Then it went to a luxury uh, senior, living you know, uh, yeah, residential living facility. Then it went to, um, a 55 and over facility, and now it's back to the latest proposal. And they got approved last week or the, two weeks ago at the last town um, planning and zoning meeting. It's going to be a gas station, a car wash, and oh, um, an ice cream. 
an ice cream store and a uh, auto, an electric vehicle auto display room. It's they were very. There was a lot of discussion, and it can't be. It's not a. It's not a dealership. It's more of like they're going to be on display, and then people can kind of come in and just kind of look and see. But it really. But from a from a state of Connecticut regulatory and whatever, whatever, it cannot be. A, it's not a dealership. It's more of a promotional display of what the possibilities are going to be. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's more of a display so, so, and education. Well, can we go there to see a Tesla? <laughs> yeah, I think what you can go there and see all brands. I think that's what they're the the developer said that there's something similar, I guess, in Springfield or, or he went to see it. And it's going to be where different makers can display their cars, but they can't sell them. But it's going to be like, I don't know, informational and go through and then you can figure out what you want and then you go to the actual dealership after that. Yeah, you can check out Noble. N O B L E is the um the brand name, I guess, of the of the gas station and the EV station. They're gonna have EV chargers there with the gas station. They have a facility, a smaller facility in New Britain, um, on New Britain Avenue. And and then the Springfield facility is an education facility, which uh, I, I'm glad to hear that I was very excited to see that. Um, and yes, it will be an education facility, like like you said. Thank you. Karen, what type of car do you have? Excuse us, Joyce. Uh, Karen, Karen, don't you have a hybrid? I, I do. I have. Um, we we could certainly talk about that uh, later. Uh, but I have a uh, a Hyundai. I could talk for a long time about that. So we'll, <laughs> we'll put that in new business. <laughs> okay, but that's. Really interesting. Peter Mountain has kind of come round full circle again. Yep. Um, and anything else that we should know about Commissioner? I mean, a council no. woman. I guess, you know, speaking of, I don't know, maybe Rob, you would know this, but apparently last weekend there was a fire on top of Cedar Mountain. Um, again, one of the vacant buildings at the Cedar Crest Hospital. I think it was arson, but it also burned, you know, some of the property as well. I don't know whether you have any more information, Rob. No, I don't really have any particular information, but I, from my understanding, it was pretty extensive um, as the damage that that was created by it. But I, to what uh, extent, I do not know. Jeez, so much so much excitement going on. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Is um, let's see. I think um, anything else from anyone else? Nope. Okay. Our next meeting will be on December eighth at six thirty p.m. And before we adjourn, I want to um, send everyone great thanksgiving um wishes to with the friends and family and enjoy the holiday weekend and then we'll be back again like i said on the 8th of december at 6 30 again we'll meet here on um um zoom and um i guess now i can ent entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Commissioner Banco. I second it. Thank you, Commissioner Trombetta. And are we all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I want and again thank you to um um get um councilwoman yeah. <laughs> Draco and to uh, our staff liaison. Rob Hillman for being here tonight. Okay. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Great to see you, everyone. Yep.
Good night. Okay, talk to you. See Bye. you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.